this statement that we got this morning um, is a bit of a shock because over the course of the last 24 to 48 hours, uh, U.S. officials were obviously concerned about what uh, Iran might do as retaliation uh, for obviously, you know, the, the major operations that Israel has been carrying out against Hezbollah. Uh, but we weren't hearing specifics surrounding it. Now, the fact that the senior White House official is saying that there is the expectation of an imminent ballistic missile threat against Israel by Iran, that's incredibly noteworthy. Uh, that brings this uh, to a different level than we have been feeling from U.S. officials, frankly, over the last uh, 24, 48 hours or so. Uh, I think it's also noteworthy that in this statement from the senior White House official, we hear them saying very clearly that if Iran does go through with this and carries out an attack against Israel, there will be severe consequences for Iran. Uh, there is a sense that perhaps a statement like this could deter Iran from going ahead with some planned operations, uh, notably the fact that this senior White House official is also saying that the United States is working with Israel to shore up its defenses, as Nick was talking about when there was the last Iranian attack against Israel, uh, a major attack uh, back in April. The U.S. worked with its allies to really solidify and effectively uh, defend Israel. And so the U.S. is sending a clear message now that they are already engaged in preparations of the like potentially in this situation. So there's a lot of questions that we'll be asking U.S. officials now exactly what does that effort uh, look like. We heard this morning from the Secretary of State. Uh, he was here. This was before this statement came out, but he did say that the United States stands with Israel and Israel's defense, even though overnight, of course, there was the ground operation, uh, even though Israel is calling it a limited incursion into Lebanon that the U.S. had been warning against, that has not shaken the resolve of Biden administration officials to even this morning, uh, despite that action by Israel, to say that they continue to stand by Israel's defense. That is likely informed by the fact that they are tracking uh, this potentially imminent threat coming in from Iran right now. So we're, we're really working to learn more uh, in terms of the magnitude of this potential threat from Iran. Mm. And that is, of course, unclear at this point. Kylie, thank you. We'll let Kylie go and work her sources. Ben Wiedemann uh, is with us from Beirut. Um, I'm right in the center uh, of uh, things that we have been reporting on, of course, over the past uh, week or so, very specifically uh, today with further airstrikes on Beirut and around south and east of Lebanon and the ground incursion, temporary and limited, according to Israel, that has started uh, in southern Lebanon, about 200 kilometers up, uh, up the coastline from where I, I am here. Ben, there will be those in this region who will suggest uh, that this news uh, today that we are hearing about a, a, an imminent uh, attack by Iran on Israel with ballistic missiles is exactly where Benjamin Netanyahu wants to land. There will be those, uh, his critics, who say this is the ultimate war in what his critics say is his goal of forever wars. Your, your thoughts at this point? Well, certainly we are seeing Israel Becky on a roll. Uh, they have severely crippled uh, Hezbollah, uh, they have uh, demolished Gaza and not crushed Hamas, uh, but certainly crippled them as well, and perhaps he is looking elsewhere. Keep in mind, within the last 48 hours, in addition uh, to military operations in Gaza and Lebanon, uh, Israel apparently has also struck Syria and Yemen. And uh, certainly we heard a, uh, an address uh, in English uh, from Benjamin Netanyahu to the Iranian people, which certainly suggested that uh, he wasn't just sending a message, but he was sort of, if you read between the lines, he seemed to have something up his sleeve. And so, uh, yes, this may be his moment as the United States is essentially paralyzed by this uh, chaotic uh, electoral campaign uh, as U.S. diplomacy or, or even Middle East policy in general seems to be utterly adrift, uh, keeping in mind that 
The war in Gaza began almost a year ago, and in that time, the United States has shuttled its diplomats around the region, but has accomplished nothing. The regional war uh, that so many feared has, in a sense, begun. In a sense, begun. There's a war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. There's a war between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. Is uh, Iran about to launch ballistic missiles on Israel. This, there is, this is a regional war. The situation is increasingly dangerous and out of control, and there's nobody at the wheel in the White House. They come out with these statements uh, suggesting they won't be happy with an Israeli land incursion, uh, but then we see the news that Lloyd Austin, the U.S. Defense Secretary, has been on the phone several times with Yoav Gallant, his Israeli counterpart, essentially reiterating the same thing, that Israel, the United States is committed to Israel's defense and its right to self-defense. Uh, but what we're seeing on reality, on the ground, is that the threat of regional war grows ever closer. And I already said there's a regional war, but an even broader uh, regional war involving now perhaps Iran and others. So it's a very dangerous uh, point we're at. And uh, as I said, there's no one at the wheel in the United States, in the White House, in the State Department, uh, the one superpower that has the influence to actually change the course of events. Well, as you've been speaking um, and providing um, what is, as ever, um, extremely important analysis, um, we are just getting uh, further word, further detail uh, from the U.S. Um, and it is the following, Ben, that the U.S. believes that the imminent attack on Israel by Iran uh, that we um, were just reporting on uh, earlier could be similar in scope and scale to the response that it launched back in April. Now, let's uh, provide some context for that. At that time, that was a response to the targeted assassination of those at its consulate in Damascus. Um, Israel um, never acknowledged that they were behind that targeted attack uh, on um, Iran's assets in Syria. But it is assumed to have been an Israeli strike. So let's go back. And if the U.S. Uh, believes that it could be similar in scope and scale, we were talking about some 350 missiles or so at the time, if I remember correctly, back in April, launched um, on Israel, causing ultimately no uh, real um, impact. Um, very, very few of those uh, targets, those, those missiles uh, actually reached their targets. And what was very important back at the time, it was clear, that, that attack by Iran was telegraphed around this region and beyond. And it was very clear that Tehran had given a heads up to everybody that this would happen. It was about 72 hours, as I understand it, that sort of telegraphed window. It remains to be seen whether, you know, it is 72 hours this time before we see a strike. But I wonder if you want to just add any sort of perspective, given that extra information that we've just received. Similar, expected to be similar in size and scope as the response from Tehran back in April. Well, back in April, you'll recall, after that uh, attempted Iranian strike on Israel, uh, the United States tried, restrained, told Israel uh, not to respond in a massive way uh, to avoid things going out of control. And I don't recall precisely what the Israelis hit, but it appeared to be something of no significance whatsoever. So at the time in April, the danger of sort of this war broadening to involve Iran and Israel on an ongoing basis was averted. The question is now, with, as I said, the United States, its diplomacy uh, is basically a neutral and the White House uh, seems to be empty. Is the United States going to be able to or willing to be able to exercise the kind of pressure it did back in April to stop the Israelis from massively retaliating uh, for those uh, Iranian strikes? Uh, that's the question and certainly what we've seen 
particularly in, in regards to Lebanon over the last two weeks, where the Biden administration came out with this proposal, ceasefire proposal that they had crafted with France that we're told the Israelis actually signed on to. Uh, but uh, then we heard Benjamin Netanyahu at the UN United Nations General Assembly during his speech not once mentioning a ceasefire and within the hour apparently authorizing uh, the strike that killed Hassan Nasrallah, which only uh, made the situation here in Lebanon even more volatile. And since then, we've seen a week or now seven days of Israeli strikes. And now overnight, uh, these uh, limited raids, as the Israelis call them. Uh, so the situation has clearly indicated the last few months uh, is that the United States is just absolutely timid when it comes to pressuring its key ally in the Middle East, that it provides all the weapons it needs to conduct all these military operations. It just doesn't seem uh, willing to put its foots on the, the U.S. foot on the brake and bring this situation at least to a temporary pause. It just isn't happening.